So two pictures to sum up the, my story as a previous Googler and a social entrepreneur right now. So my name is Freddie Law. I worked at in Google. The best picture to describe is with all the food because everything is free. And you get free lunch inside. <laughs> and as a social entrepreneur, no one knows who are they actually. And the words behind are, they will die for success. So that's a social entrepreneur. So in 1985, one person, I don't know if you recognize this guy, Steve Jobs in 1985, <laughs> he got quit by the company he founded, and I share some similarity with him. 1985, <laughs> it wasn't me. I just searched, I just searched a cute Chinese baby on Google. Because <laughs> when I... <laughs> Because when I search Baby Freddy, it comes up the picture. <laughs> so I think it's better to have this picture with Steve Jobs. Because when Steve Jobs, in his college life, he, he lost himself. He, he wanted to find himself. Then I shared the same thing. When I was in college, I lost myself. I wanted to find myself. Then we both went to India, but with <laughs> around 26 years difference. <clears throat> so I went to India. First, I do two friends. I bought everything, big pack pack, uh, even the water bag and the walkie talkie, and shaved all my hat. So you can see. <laughs> so in India, I wanted to find myself. I wanted to know what's the meaning of life. I wanted to just be who I am. Then I sum up with the crow at the end of the trip after two months, 16 different cities. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. So when I came back, I became a volunteer doing a Cantonese training with South Asian community in a mosque. Then I teach a little Pakistani girl Cantonese, but she came up to me and said, I don't want to learn. So I look at him, her and I ask why. She avoids my eye contact and said, it doesn't matter we speak Cantonese or English, people just discriminate us in Hong Kong. So I wonder, is it a Asia's world city, my hometown? And there's a lot of frustration that there's 27% of the minority unemployment, whilst 4% are for Chinese people. And they all somehow get discriminated. I just don't know why. So with all this frustration, I have no idea how to solve. I don't know what I can do. But it comes to my turning point of life. I went to work in Google. It was not in Hong Kong. It was the Asia headquarter. It's in India. So in India, Google is written in this way. <laughs> and in Google, uh, as I said, all the food are free. So all I'm thinking at that time wasn't how to solve the problem, but how to get an Indian girlfriend and had a Chindian baby. <laughs> so, I, so my son could communicate with 2.3 billion people with fluent Hindi and Putonghua. I failed, so I focused on work. <laughs> but the workplace did really distractive because it's really creative. You can do anything. And officially, you get 20% of time doing everything. Anything that in your mind that you can do to, to enjoy. So that's the Google Place. So the motto behind our t-shirt, I'm feeling lucky, is really true. And I personalize it. I say, I'm freaking lucky <laughs> to get in. But <coughs> there's some frustration. This is the Indian traffic. The car inside is my car because I have a driver. And a very short journey takes me an hour to work every day. And I cannot sleep because of a very, very small noise of tuk, tuk, tuk. Very little Indian kid always knock on my window, begging for food, doing something like this. So I look at them, and I can't do anything. The feeling was really shitty, because you are somehow ignoring the elephant in the room. There's a huge problem next to you, and you can do nothing. So. I was thinking, OK, what can I do? I want to have a creative solution. So I used my 20% of time in Google, contemplating on the problem. <laughs> then we had a Google bag, and we have all the food over there for free. So I was thinking, <laughs> I can do something with <coughs> banana. So whenever the child was bagging, over my window, at first, I, I know I have everything inside. So I first pay a little joke with him. 
whatever he does, I follow with a big smile on my face. Like doing this, he was totally freaked out. <laughs> Six or five years old baby, looking at my window, having a sad face, and then having this crazy Chinese smiling at him. <laughs> and at the end, while we were playing around, I see not as a beggar in front of me. I see a very innocent child that deserves happiness and a very less childhood. I can't do much, and at the end of the, the, the little interaction, I gave him a banana. In return, I get a very genuine smile on his face, waving hands to me. That moment changes my life. One banana cannot change the world, cannot save everything, but it conf confirms my belief that wherever you are, a difference. So, of course, that's in Google, there's only not one banana, but a lot of different bananas. <laughs> and a lot of different bananas. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, the little fun thing is, one day after work at 7 p.m., um, my Indian boss came with me with his big Indian hand put on my shoulder and said, Freddy, Freddy, I recognize you love banana a lot. <laughs> So I having the same smile with him and say, I want to say a lot of different things. And, and I, I explain a little bit and he asked me why you do such a things. In my mind, I had a million answers, but I just reply in two words. Why not? So with this why not attitude, I move on to still find myself. This is also in the office, by the way. And, <laughs> and one phrase in the office inspired me. We should have a healthy disregard of impossibility. Then I was thinking, I want to do the impossibility. So I went to do a young social entrepreneurship. It doesn't make sense. Young people, no money, no capital, no network, no expertise, nothing. <laughs> Be an entrepreneur is like making blood out of rock, survive in the very tough competitive market, and you wanted to make impact at the same time while you are 22. So I think it just doesn't make sense. For everybody, it's like impossibility. For me, with this sad face, sad face, sad face, if you have a very healthy disregard, it's a very happy face at the end. So I want to embrace my passion to do something with my frustrations in Hong Kong. Then I move on to a journey, to a trip about global youth empowerment. I travel along, I learn, I wanted to do some leadership trainings for the youth around the world. So it sums up somehow some, something that I've done. This is in Romania. I had a very big determination. I think this would lead me to a successful case. And then I was in Beijing. I want to be a leader. I want to lead people. I want to empower people to be uh, leaders. It was in Germany. You need to <laughs> differentiate yourself as a, one of the few Chinese with the German team. <laughs> and it was in uh, uh, Taiwan. You need to stay in the front to be a young social entrepreneur. When you can do that, you get lots of girls, but just joking. <laughs> it was in Singapore, I was doing training with all of them. With all this experience, I was thinking, okay, I want to have a team. I want to have a global team. I want this global team works in Hong Kong. I want to do education. I want to have a discrimination-free Asia's world city. Then, of course, it's really tough. It was in Ukraine. I was doing trainings. And the most important thing is to take action. So I went back to my mother's school. I shared with all this idea. We do a little bit trial and error, and then it started everything in 2009. Without the person with the arrow, Sylvia Kasim, one of my co-founder, she was graduated from Oxford, we, with the same why not attitude, we met in India, upstairs office in Deloitte. We had a BBQ and say, okay, we want to make change, we want to do something. As a minority herself, she thought the same thing as me. Then we met again in Germany by chance, and we offered a, ta a table of dinner. We said, do you want to come with me? And she said, OK. And then she just quit her job in London, fly to Hong Kong. We found it. Intercultural education is now what we are doing. And we wanted to empower young people in a global learning environment. So you see, this is our global team, more than 10 different nationalities, with Romanians, with Ukrainian, with German, with Turkish, with uh, British, with Chinese, with Canadian. Different nationality with one same classroom for Chinese people. And where's the social impact? We wanted to have this global leadership program for the school, for the kids to look at the world in a fair world view. So they don't discriminate, they embrace the world, 
and they have the leadership. So of course, I want to deal with my frustration, so I wanted to employ the, global, the local global people. So they are our crew. Two years back, we found them. They, they can speak basic English. They're very good African drummers. They cannot find a job. And we embrace them to our global team. We talk to the school. We have Africans. We have the session. They understand Africa as one, one of the part of the whole global leadership program. They can get employed. They can earn money. And they can use their expertise to utilize their talent to make a difference. Of course, we have another case. He's a Pakistani guy, Max. And we discover his talent of break dancing, magic, yeah. and rapping in chi Chinese. So at that time, he was dancing a Michael Jackson dance with all the people, talking about Pakistani life in Hong Kong. And at the end, revealed that he was born in Hong Kong. He speaks perfect Cantonese. Why you discriminated me in the very first impression? Because just the difference of I have more hairs, my skin, or anything. And right now, this big life-changing experience of him leads him to TVB. You will see him on television soon, so, and we need to find another one. But <laughs> <laughs> we also have frustration. The frustration is two things. Number one, facts. You work with school where the next future generation were born, and the whole school is using facts. <laughs> I didn't really know what facts mean. And our team need to buy a fax machine to fax our details to the school and talk to the principal and said we had a global leadership program. <laughs> Second thing is the principal. <laughs> about social entrepreneurship, it's all about conscious consumption, talking about the goodness of your heart, talking about helping the society. On the phone, hello principal, we are social enterprise, blah, blah, blah. He asked one question, do you charge? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think the principal has no conscience. So <laughs> So the other thing is the principle is really market focused. When you're talking a lot of things about social enterprise, different things, they don't listen. But when I said my partner was graduated from Oxford <laughs> and I went to Stanford and they said, okay, how much? <laughs> <laughs> so our global team really wanted to help the society, but the market really demands in other things. They look at your profile, they think, okay, it's an English training program and they think, you will produce good students, and one of the reasons why all the principal buy is because their neighboring school actually bought our program. <laughs> so that's the frustration for the principal that we cannot communicate somehow. Anyway, we pass through. Entrepreneurship is making bread out of the rock, so we rock really hard, we have determination, and we really wanted to make change. And the big recognition is the big guy, Under Secretary of Education Bureau, actually come to our workshop and understand what you're doing, what enterprise, what you're doing, what kind of education, and at the end, it was really good. He agrees, but he cannot help as a government official. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> what we can do is to find an opportunity to fund the whole enterprise. Then we win a competition called Hong Kong Social Enterprise Challenge. We're number one in Hong Kong. And what I'm thinking is not about recognition, it's all about the money. <laughs> With six months, no salary, having a very good profile, quitting from a very good organization, and winning the competition, having a check of $100,000, and finally my parents said, son, you have done a good job. <laughs> but don't get me wrong, my parents support me all along the way, and I love them very much. So that's a social entrepreneur, having, going through this kind of different challenges, barriers, following the passion, following the dreams. That's who I am. And inter -edu intercultural education is now doing fine. Finally, we are self-sustained, we break even, we're earning a little bit, we can hire more ethnic minority, our team's getting bigger and we're getting more recognition, more business. Principal finally understand what we are doing, what we are trying to do. And our global team is getting bigger, more people getting involved and more recognitions that we can get. And more people understand the impossibility of having a young social entrepreneurship is just a dream. This is a reality, we turn the dream into reality, and now everybody, when they see Freddy, they know and they understand young social entrepreneurship is possible. So, to have some sum up, first you need to believe you can try. You need to find your frustration deep down in your heart, around you. There must be a lot of elephants in the room that you ignore. But when you feel a bit shitty, you want to have a creative solution. 
once you find it, once you do it, and you think you can make a difference, and you need to embrace your passion. Follow it, do it bit by bit. Of course, have fun. A lot of fun along the way. When you see it's fun, it's fun. And then form a team and take action. That's the most, most important thing. Talking makes no sense. But when you walk the talk, it makes sense. So at the end, what I want to sum up is we don't need to curse the darkness. We need to light a candle. Then we can solve problems bit by bit. And I see a lot of candles here. Everyone sitting here is a candle that lighting other people's life. And I had a quote for all your all yours candle. A candle actually loses nothing in lighting others. So have a very goodness of your heart. You need to light up others. And when all these candles are lighting up all others' candles, our world will be bright. And when so many candles lighting up so many other candles, we can build a fire. <laughs> <laughs> and with this fire, we can have a very nice marshmallow as well. <laughs> and I wanted to sum up. <laughs> A lot of people sum up uh, social entrepreneurship as you don't give a man a fish, but you teach him how to fish so he can feed himself in his life. I want to sum up as you build a fire, build a man a fire, he will be warm for a night. You set a young man on fire, he will burn others. <laughs> Thank you very much.